How's it going, Ann Kemp? This is Justin Gibney, president of the Ann Campaign, and this is another civic update. Where we are trying to raise civic literacy among Christians so that as we go out into society, we can engage in a more informed and effective manner. And since this is the first civic update of 2019, I thought it'd be a good chance for me to talk about what the Ann Campaign thinks Christian politics should look like in 2019 through 2020 and, and really beyond. For those of you who have been following the Ann campaign for a while, you know that we think Christians should engage politics primarily because it gives us an opportunity to love our neighbor through voting and advocating on their behalf. Politics gives us some wonderful tools to promote human flourishing. And that is mainly that's primarily why Christians should be involved. And while if we're not involved, we're being remiss because we'd be missing a great opportunity to help others. And when I look around, though, you know, through all that Christians have been through in politics, I'm not sure a lot of people get that as the reason why we should be in it. I mean, a lot of people, once they step out of church, are just as divided as the rest of the world is when it comes to politics. Because we tend to separate our faith from our politics, which we've talked about as a terrible mistake. Uh, we often, you often see that there are some Christians that in politics are just as uncompassionate as the far right. There are others who are just as permissive and secular as the hard left. And that's something that we have to do better. We cannot reflect the world when we go into politics. We have to be about our father, father's business and doing it a better way. Um, but the good news is, that 2019, going into 2020, there's so much going on politically that it provides us with a new and really a historic opportunity to do politics the right way, to put a more clear, uh, credible, and credibility is important, and courageous witness into the public square and into politics. The question is, are we going to be humble enough? Uh, are we going to be organized enough? And are we going to be compassionate enough to do those things in the right way? The time is up for us complaining, talking about how we're not properly represented and all that. Well, if that's the truth, organize some other Christians and represent yourself. Or if you think you fit into the Ann Campaign's framework, join the Ann Campaign. We'd love to have you because we're doing some big things in 2019. But sitting down and complaining or just talking about it on social media is not enough. It's time to act and do something different. And let me also say this, if you're the kind of believer who is comfortable uh, in your political party, you do kind of whatever the party says or agree with whatever they say, uh, you're going to be a little bit frustrated with the end campaign this year because the end campaign this year is going to be challenging Christians to prioritize or to put first Christian principles, to be loyal to Christian principles, to be loyal to good policy before being loyal to a political party or ideological tribe, to put those things first. Now, does that mean you can't be part of a political party? It doesn't mean that. I'm part of a party. Does it mean that the parties are somehow equal? No, nobody's saying that. But we are saying that regardless of how you, you view that matter, that you need to put your faith before politics. Are you able to do that? Uh, because the days of being a generic Republican or the days of being a generic Democrat as a Christian are over. You've got to be more than that. If you're going to be, a, if you decide that you want to be a Republican, you should be trying to be more like President Calvin Coolidge and Jack Kemp. That should be your model, not just the generic Republican. If you're going to be a Democrat, if you're a Democrat, you should be trying to be like Fannie Lou Hamer, who didn't come in and, and just uh, say, I'm going to do whatever the party's going to do. No, she was a Christian. She represented more censored or traditional uh, social uh, um, values, but also was very compassionate and wanted to help the poor and things of that nature. You can do it because being a zombie and just following behind the party is unacceptable. Um, you have to be a leader and you have to distinguish yourself from the party. You have to question the party when necessary instead of being indoctrinated and just going along with whatever they give you. So that's one of the things that we're going to be focused on and really challenging Christians to do. But we also, and many of you have seen it, we also been talking for a while about new Christian politics. In fact, you may have seen that hashtag, and I'd like you all to start using that hashtag when you see something that is a representative of new Christian politics. 
And late last year on our website, The Crux and the Call, that's where you can get the Ann Campaign's content. Uh, I wrote an article called New Christian Politics, and I laid out uh, six things that I thought were important to this idea of new Christian politics. We didn't just want to talk about it. We wanted you to give you an idea of what we meant by it. Now, these aren't in any particular order, but these are six things that I think are very crucial to new Christian politics. Not exhaustive, but here's a good start. The first thing is uh, an understanding and appreciation for social justice and compassion. People need to know us by our compassion, by how we help others, by how we sacrifice for others. And that's not just because it's good PR. That's because that's something that should be written on our hearts. So when people think of Christian politics, the first things they should be thinking is that how Christians are looking to help others and be compassionate in that space and really um, uh, focus on and promote human dignity. Number two is biblical values and conviction. Let's face it, doctrine always matters. And Christians are always going to have to speak up for the truth. Uh, our values are the same in 2002 as they are today in 2019. Our values don't change because they're based on timeless principles. And so we have to be clear of that. We're not trying to, to create a theocracy. That's not what we're asked to do. But we certainly must speak up for the things that bring about human dignity. And when there's no moral order, there's not going to be any justice and there's not going to be uh, human dignity. Uh, so biblical values and, and conviction are going to be very important to new Christian politics. Next, we have to talk about the common good. Uh, I believe that for too long, Christians uh, practice what I call the politics of Christian self-interest, where we were looking out for ourselves. We were seeing how much we could protect ourselves Instead of understanding that we're not here on this earth just to protect ourselves. In fact, we're here to serve people. We're here to be a light, profess the good news of the gospel. And we can't do that if we're always focused on protecting ourselves. Uh, so we need people need to see that we are about the common good and about helping others and not just about helping ourselves. We should always be pursuing the common good. Uh, number four is what I call informed civility, informed civility. It means that we need to be informed about the issues of the day, about the political process, about the spirit of the day. And all those things are important if we're going to be effective in the public square. But we also need to be respectful of our opponents. And this is important. Because it doesn't mean that we agree. It doesn't mean that we're docile. It doesn't mean that we're not determined and spirited and holding people accountable in a real way. But it does mean that we can't dehumanize even those people who dehumanize us. It's just not the Christian way to go about it. And there has to be a certain level of respect. And I hope that we are able to pursue that as well. Next is accountability. Uh, we have to keep in mind that maintaining Christian principles and a credible witness it's always more important than winning. That doesn't mean winning isn't important, but when in conflict with our principles and when in conflict with what, what Christian character is about, we have to put winning aside and put the right witness into society. That also goes along with holding all politicians, all civic leaders and all political parties accountable. We cannot let people go unaccountable just because we like them, just because their cultural identity and things of that nature. Because when we do that, it may be uh, helpful to our, our ideological tribe or our cultural identity, but people get hurt and people are suffering because we're not getting things done in the way that they should be done. So we have to make sure that we're holding our politicians accountable and that we're voting for people based on qualifications and what they can do for the people, not based on how people look and all that. And I think 2020 is going to be a test of if we can vote for people for the right reasons instead of the reasons that will be thrown on us, which will be very identitarian. And all that sounds great until you realize that people suffer when the right person isn't in office. Lastly is unity. Unity. Although the world may and the society may be having a hard time finding common ground, Christians should not have that problem. We have the Bible. We have Christian principles in common. We need to be able to come together, urban Christians, white evangelicals and others, and say we're not going to agree on everything. But the things we agree on, we should fight for together. And these things are things that should come straight out of the Bible. So unity is going to be a huge part of this as well. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. You'll get a lot more of this coming from the civic updates and also from the, 
uh, Church Politics Podcast. I look forward to going back and forth with you this year. Take care.